So the question I get most often is, what's the best over under shotgun for less than $1,000? And previously, I didn't think there was one, but I have found it. It's this Yieldies Sporting SPS, and I'm gonna tell you why here on Bull Shooters. It has a relatively long length of pull at 14 and a half. Hi folks, in almost 20 years of professionally testing and writing about guns for NRA magazines like American Hunter and American Rifleman and others, the most common question I get in letters and when I'm out and about is this. What is the least expensive but best over under shotgun they can buy? And I hate to sound like a snob, but previously I would typically tell people to save their money because before you can get into kind of the gold standard, something like a Browning Satori or a Beretta a Silver Pigeon, this is actually my old BL4, but a Beretta, prices have gone up, you're talking 25, 28, three grand just to get into one of these guns because they're very nice. There's the gold standard. Now, there are plenty of over under shotguns that are cheaper than that. And there are some that are really cheap, but historically the question has been, if you're buying an over under, usually there are a couple of reasons. A lot of times people use them for trap and skeet in clay games because they're arguably a little bit safer because all you have to do to unload them is take the shells out and trap and skeet games are, are two shot games generally. And then once you do, everybody can see that the gun's unloaded and it can't function. You can walk around. A lot of people, including me, just shoot better with an over under. I think it's the stack barrel, the single sight plane. So there are a lot of good reasons to want an over under, but let's be honest with ourselves. A big reason everybody wants one I think is because they're very popular at clay fields and when you're showing up and all your peers, most people there have a nice over under, it's sometimes difficult to walk up with an old 870 pump. There's nothing wrong with that, but let's be honest. So I would politely tell these people to save your money because there is a huge gap between you know, some of the $800 shotguns, even the 12, 1500, like a Franke Instinct, that's a, you know, that's a pretty good gun. But a lot of that is aluminum frame. There's just a huge leap between a, a Beretta or a Browning, or of course, some of the uh, even upper echelon shotguns that can go up to 30 grand easily. I mean, who doesn't want a Parazzi? But I digress. This question I get, I would usually say, save your money until the other day, I walked into Academy Sports. I looked on the rack and I saw a beautiful looking over under shotgun. But I've been fooled and I've had my heart broken before because I've seen plenty of good looking shotguns. But once you get them off the shelf, feel them, they feel like two by fours, the wood to metal finish sucks. And then you take them out to shoot them. They just don't hold up. Why? Most of these really cheap shotguns, we're talking about sub thousand dollar over under shotguns, tend to be from Turkey. Now, why Turkey? Well, Turkey is historically a gun-making country with a lot of gun-making background. They have skilled labor, but historically the Turks, although they were good at, at making guns, they did not understand the American market. They didn't understand steel or the hardening process very well, and so a lot of these guns broke down. Now, why? It's because Americans used the hell out of their guns. And if you shoot guns all the time, these, these flaws expose themselves and a lot of these shotguns just tear apart. There are probably close to a dozen shotgun makers now that import guns from Turkey and because they've had to come to all a speech over there and standing over these guys' shoulders, making them do it how the American market wants the guns, the guns from Turkey has have slowly gotten better. Now you add CNC machinery that the guns can be mass produced, but then they're fit and finished by hand by uh, Turkish skilled laborers that know what they're doing and you get a pretty good product, especially when they're made to spec from American companies who know what sportsmen want. But I walked into Academy, saw this gun and it was $699. It looked good, so I asked to see it. It was this Yildiz SPZ MC Sporting HP. That's a long ass name and it's ridiculous. Seal these. Uh, it's one of my only complaints on the gun.
nonetheless, I took it off the shelf, skeptical, of course, because again, I've been down this road before. When the clerk handed me this shotgun for the first time, I inspected it and felt it, and I was amazed it didn't feel like a $700 over-under shotgun typically feels. So I went a little further because I was surprised again, the, the small details that you see in a gun really, really underscore the level of manufacturing. Yield Ease has been around for 45 years from uh, the industrial region of, of Turkey. They have imported Japanese CNC machines. Uh, you can look at their factory online. It looks like it'd make an emergency room jealous with its cleanliness. And uh, the company CEO claims that they put more emphasis into quality control and less on just mass production, and that's good. And it looks like that that's the case here. Now, before a lot of these Turkish shotguns were only tested to a few thousand rounds, this one is tested to 25,000. And the company CEO says that he believes it would go 100,000. You can see by the checkering, it's really precise, really well done. You can tell it's not just an afterthought where it's run through a machine really, really quickly. No doubt it's done by a machine, but it's done well. For a lot of guns, especially with 30 inch more target barrels, are weight forward. Then you get some guns that have aluminum receivers, the weight's back. I like that between the hands balance. You can tell this because the thing balances perfectly on its, on its hinge pin. Yeah, right there. So that's exactly where the gun should be balanced. So if you're going for a target style gun, something that you can shoot sporting clays, trap or skeet, or just high volume doves, or just shooting the, the hell out of, you really want a steel receiver. Now that does add weight. Of course it adds strength, but it adds weight, adds weight but that weight is actually good. That weight mitigates recoil. It keeps the balance between the hands and it just makes a more robust, tougher gun. So this model, the Sporting HPS, is made from 4140 steel receiver. And this is at Academy, which is Yieldies' exclusive distributor for the United States. This is their most expensive gun at $699. And this is their only steel receiver gun there. And that's why I wanted to, to pick this one because I wanted to take it dove hunting and then shoot the crap out of it. But I've shot this baby a bunch. As a matter of fact, le last September, I went down to South Texas for a little dove hunting action with my buddy, oh, name drop, George Hill. I'm gonna take you through the features of this shotgun, the Sporting HPS. Starting from the back, it's got a no bullshit recoil pad. The reason I say no bullshit is it's all rubber, so it's real cushy, but it's slick enough that it doesn't hang up and it's fast. I really like it. They did a great job on a recoil pad, and a little thing like this can go a long way to shooting well. What really separates this gun is its adjustable comb. I can't stress how important this is for shotgun shooting, especially competitive, but if you can get a shotgun that fits you properly, uh, length of pull is a big thing, but even more importantly than length of pull is the drop at comb. That puts your head perfectly in line down the rib, not on it or not under it. In a target gun style, it has a full pistol grip. I could take that or leave it, but most uh, but most target shooters love it. It has a subtle, nice done little palm swell there, which just feels good. A lot of people like it, target shooters like it. Going down the action, it has a single selective trigger, meaning you can choose which barrel the over or under to shoot first. Pretty standard. I, as said, it's got a 4140 steel receiver. And this thing is, it's got mechanical hammers. Now, if you don't know what the difference between mechanical hammers and say inertia system like Beretta uses, well, here's how you tell. Gun's unloaded, it's, so it's cocked. I'm gonna pull the trigger and then I can pull the other one too. So it has two hammers in there that both cock. A Beretta, for example, is an inertial trigger and here's how you tell. Unloaded, I'm gonna pull the trigger and now I can't pull it again because it uses recoil and inertia to cock the other one. That's how you tell. So this is in, this is mechanical triggers. Are there one that's better than the other? Not really. It's got a wonderful fore end. I just, I like a beaver tail, but I don't like a huge one. This is kind of a hybrid because it's pretty thin there. I can feel like I can feel the, the barrels without some big blocky, ugly beaver tail. 
This is an Anson and Dealey style latch that's been around forever. Really well done in there. This latch, of course, provides the platform uh, for the cocking lever to cock. It also provides the, the platform that the ejectors work off of. This thing does have ejectors and they are pretty powerful. So take that apart. You see the mono block here, which this is, this is machined and formed as one piece and it's superior and very strong, that mono block. Then the 4140 Italian steel barrels are attached and regulated. Chopper lumps put in, the ribs brazed, uh, the barrel is ported. That's something you won't find in a gun of this price. Mid beads put in, front light pipe, and then choke tubes. Then it comes down to if these barrels are regulated properly. If I get this set up and, it's, and it fits me right, where I'm looking right down the rib, and I get a patterning board, and I pull the gun up, both eyes open, pull the trigger, and this thing prints its pattern right where I'm looking, and it does that with both barrels, it's regulated well. You can see that from the moment you shoot it. I like this case even. I mean, it's a fitted case, pretty cool. Um, it comes with a trigger lock. The five choke tubes it comes with are Skeet, improved cylinder, modified, improved modified, an excellent choke for clay games, and full. It has a relatively long length of pull at 14 and a half, but for target shooting, I believe in a longer length of pull rather than a shorter. Woo! Three pounds, two ounces. And then the second barrel, two pounds, 12 ounces, three one, three pound triggers. I knew it, that's about as good as shotgun get and they, it just feels good too. 30 inch barrels, but with the extended choke tubes, 30 and three quarters. I like to weigh bass and guns with this thing. This gun was touted online to be 8.1. To me, it seems a little heavier. 9.1, that's a pound heavier than they said. So I'm gonna shoot it and then I'll come back and give my thoughts. Again, Academy or Yieldies is paying me squat. They're not a sponsor, but I wish they were. When I started shooting, I could, yeah, I could just tell the gun fit well. So of course, if the barrels are regulated properly and the, the patterns are okay, I felt like I was gonna hit with it and confidence is a huge deal when it comes to wing shooting. I really hit well with this gun. I could absolutely take this gun right now, hunting or to the play range and just be just fine with it. And I don't know, I hate to sound like a snob, but for me, that's a pretty big deal because I am kind of used to shooting the Berettas and the, the upper end shotguns. This is a gun I could take though and be proud of. So here are a few things I found. One, it didn't loosen up at all. The action stayed, stayed tight after 300 rounds. The recoil mitigation properties on this gun was awesome. I patterned all the choke tubes. They were right on the money. Really quickly, I'll talk about uh, some of the negatives and really there are only, there are only two. One, it's got adjustable comb. For me, this comb was bottomed out and it fit me, but just barely. But if you're gonna have an adjustable comb, why not make the drop it comb naturally a little bit lower? Because then you could, you could get that half inch of the adjustable comb to play with. So that would be one complaint. The other complaint, the safety is good and just, just fine. It's smooth, it's positive. It is a, a manual, meaning non-automatic. On a trap or skeet gun, that's what you want. You wanna be able to leave it without it, without having to manipulate the safety every time you, you open the gun. But it's not labeled. Now, you know, it's a selective trigger, so move to the left, I believe, shoots the top barrel, but that's the point. If you don't shoot a gun all the time, you've got a bunch of guns, maybe you only shoot uh, you know, trap or skeet a few times a year, that thing should be labeled. Those are really my only two complaints. So how did Yieldies do it? How did they make this gun with all the features? I don't know. The only place I can see that they really saved money on was the finish. You can see this, this steel receiver is kind of left in the white. It looks like a, 
almost a bead blasted or something, a stainless finish, but that's steel and it's got the two-tone because the barrels are blued. And what I do love and commend you these on, finally, the Turks have learned that we don't like our guns like Saddam Hussein likes his AK-47s or a gangster rapper likes his face all tatted up. This is grade two Turkish walnut. The wood is some of the best I've ever seen on a gun of this caliber for $699 at Academy. And if you're not from some of the Southern states, Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, uh, a, little, a little bit further east, you may not have ever heard of Academy, but for a $699 shotgun, this is the over under gun that I would recommend people buy if you want primarily a sporting clays trap and skeet gun and you have less than a thousand dollars. Great job yieldies. I'm Jeff Johnston. That's no BS. Mm -hmm.